Hey guys, so this is here bringing you another video. Now, welcome to another Riot update, League update, ranked update, whatever you want to call it. Uh, a few weeks ago, we obviously covered the recent um, Riot update about behavior, in-game behavior, and you guys seem to enjoy that. And uh, the last hour or two, Riot has released a huge update on plans for ranked and matchmaking. So I thought I'd go over it. I again, as speaking as somebody that's played, you know, League for since season one, and have generally been what I would deem a kind of hardcore ranked player since season three. I've got a lot of opinions about ranked. You know, I've been through every ranked season. I did even I did play ranked in season one and season two. Um, so I've played in every ranked season of League. So I've been through the season six Dynamic Q, season nine, oof. And then obviously a lot of us in season 10 are a little bit struggling here or there with a few things but it is nice that maybe ranked is now finally getting the a bit of the attention it's it's needed for a while um and that's great you know it's lovely to see uh, and if i'm not again it maybe it's an outdated thing um but not that long ago it was said that the majority of league players do not play ranked i don't know if that's still true or not but that's why sometimes ranked might go under the carpet a little bit because it's like well most people don't play ranked but Again, it, it, to me, it's something that they should really heavily focus on, even if that is still true. Um, but anyway, so there are a couple very, very interesting things here um, that, yeah, I've got some pretty cool things to say. So their goals, obviously, and we're going to kind of skip through like a lot of this stuff because it's stuff that we've spoken about before. But the goals of what they want to do, uh, in essence, to make ranked better is... Improve queue matchmaking quality without compromising queue time and availability. So in essence, make the matches seem more fair, but also don't make queue times be half an hour. Because a very basic way, by the way, you could improve ranked is remove autofill. And people have said this, but if you remove autofill, instantly queue times will skyrocket. Improve transparency around ranked and matchmaking. So literally maybe telling us why maybe they'll make mmr public again i don't know I, I doubt it but just being more talkative about what's going on in ranked at the moment that's good improve progression satisfaction and skill expression in our system so do you feel as a player you belong in your current division or not and like do you feel satisfied when you're actually climbing in ranked which is awesome make ranked rewards more recognizable and relevant for time spent in league so Maybe this is something to do, obviously, when you're playing in ranked at the moment, you get the ranked armor for more you play. That's not a very good reward. Maybe actually giving proper rewards. And then players can play with, find, and, you know, basically play with other people if they wanted to. So that's good. Uh, and last time, they uh, briefly touched on gamer and behavior, but it didn't um, implicitly include in it in our goals. So also they are, in, you know, including in their goals, provide players who are subject to bad behaviors, more visibility into actions taken. So being more public about punishment, and trying to you know stop that behavior instead of kind of just staying quiet about it so that's good initial results were about a third of the way through the year as crazy as that sounds um wait really mm, maybe i don't know kind of feels like we're like halfway through the year but anyway uh, our focus so far has been uh, the first goal is to improve the matchmaking qu quality for queues and everything without compromising queue time and here's what they've basically found since february um, autofill parity and autofill swap, uh, pre-made parity, new matchmaking algorithm. So I will say of my own experience, it does seem that autofill parity and duo queue parity are working. Um, when one team has an autofill, it does seem very likely that the other team will have an autofill. But again, not necessarily in the same positions. I think the worst role that you could have an autofill player in is jungle by far. If one team has got an autofill jungler and one team's got an autofill support, that's not very balanced, but anyway. So they shipped it in 10.6. Since then, autofill imbalance has gone from 11.4% of... All, wow, that's a lot, man. In all ranked games to less than 5%. So that's good with all, almost no impact to queue times. Again, I've said for like literally the last couple of years, I do not mind longer queue times for getting better quality games, you know. Um, sometimes you feel, you know, you get into the game, you look at, you know, Poro Fess or whatever, you're like, oh, well, this game's over and you just wasted 20 minutes. Um, it's better to wait five more minutes than waste 20 minutes, I believe. So that's good. But 11.4% of games before this change had one team with an autofill, one team without. That is quite a lot, over 10% of games. 
Um, autofill swap players helped us find a gap where autofill wasn't accurately counting for teammate role preferences. Uh, so they fixed that as well. That it was basically a bug, apparently. Um, here as well. Whoa, that's huge. Oh my god. Okay. Sorry, I just saw that stat myself without reading it. So pre-made parity. So when one team has got a duo queue or whatever, the other team should have a duo queue. Or if there's no duo queues, both teams should have no duo queues. It used to be 54% of pre-made matches used to be imbalanced. What? And it's gone down to six. So again, just to put that, if, I, if I've got that correct, before they did this change, 54% of games in solo queue, one team had a duo, one team didn't. Or one team had two duo queues, one team may have one duo queue. Or one team has got two, two duo queues, one team has got zero duo queues. It's gone from 54% of that being a thing being there's some form of imbalance when it comes to pre-made versus not, to six. That is massive. And I'd say congrats to Riot for doing that. And I will say, obviously, I've been duoing with Vixie. We're on a small break at the moment because of her wrist. Uh, it'll be back pretty soon. She is recovering quite fast. Um, but i say I've enjoyed duo queue. I I'm a lot less harsh to it than I've ever been, but I will 100% say, and I will hold my guns here, it is easier to climb in duo queue by far. Um, you, you know, for a few reasons. One, you have one person that you trust that isn't going to troll or int on your team. That's also, like, that always a good thing. Secondly, you have someone that you probably synergize better with um, than other people in solo queue. You could have two champions that you're picking together that synergize well together. Like, there, there's so many reasons that duo queuing is a little bit easier. Let's just say a little bit. It's probably a lot easier. Um, but this is great for, the, you know, from being so imbalanced to now much, you know, it's a lot closer when one team has got a duo, the other team does. That's a lot better. And worth noting, in the duo queue series, you know, we started the duo queue series, I believe in 10.7, when duo queue parity was a thing. It has been pretty accurate. You'll notice when me and Vixie are duoing, you'll look on Porofessor and you'll always basically see another duo on the enemy team. Um, so I think that's really good. And that itself is honestly a really big change for solo queue. And that's really good. Next up, so yeah, that's good. A uh, new matchmaking algorithm. Over the, over the last few months, we've been simulating and testing a new matchmaking algorithm to more accurately and quickly identify new and ver uh, veteran player skills. We're happy to say that we've finally made the right changes to outperform our old system and made a full upgrade to queues in 10.10. So the system is now showing improvement in most regions, blah, blah, blah. So what does that mean? That's a smurf detection thing. So recently in the community, there has been a massive conversation about smurfs. I'm going to be honest, and maybe I'm a bit defensive because obviously I've done smurf series for years. It's completely blown out of proportion how much that affects the ladder. Um, again, basic math will tell you that. If you look at, let's say, where would people say problematic smurfs are? Diamond plus, like again, I'd probably say diamond plus players account for 1% of the community. Most diamond players are not not actively playing on a smurf. So let's say 0.5% of the community are actively playing on a smurf at any given time for diamond plus level players. Um, also, their smurfs are going to be spread throughout the ranked, you know, uh, ladder. I'd actually estimate most smurfs are probably on already in higher ranks than lower ranks. Um, it, it, it's very much blown out of proportion how much it's affecting the ladder, put it this way. So many people will complain about when a smurf makes them lose a game, but they will never mention when a smurf carried them and made them win a game. Um, but that's without saying, they're doing a change here that basically um, will... Well, you can see here, the new matchmaking algorithm will find its way to rank use in early preseason. They're not implementing yet. They're gonna. They're probably going to like let it continue learning. But in essence, the idea of this will most likely be Smurfs will not be in normal games with the average ranked player anymore, or at least it will be a lot quicker to detect them, and their MMR will shoot up a lot quicker. Again, worth noting, it's harder right now to get a Smurf to higher rating because of the change that they did to MMR. You start lower rated now, which means a smurf that used to start gold now starts iron. So a smurf is actually taking longer to get through all the ranks than it ever did before. Um, so I, I don't know. Again, that to me was the opposite on what to do to fix smurfing. The, the, this seems the way to do it is you detect a smurf and you make them go higher rated quicker rather than 
delay them because delaying them just means you're playing with lower rated people for longer. Uh, do the opposite and then the smurf's not a problem, right? All right, so ranked account seeding. Formerly known as new account seeding. Ranked account seeding is built to more accurately place you in your first ranked games. In the past, we're using a fixed placement uh, where, you know, you start the bot. This is what I was talking about. A, a new account right now starts in iron, a brand new ranked account. It has average MMR, so it'll have silver 2 MMR, but it will start in iron. So here they might be actually reverting that change to let the Smurfs start higher up quicker. I, I, that that to me makes sense because again, if the complaints of the community, which again, you're never going to stop smurfing in general, not just for content creators, high rating players want smurfs because queue times get insanely long in challenge or whatever. Smurfs are always going to be a thing. But if you get smurfs to, let's say, instead of starting in the average ranks of iron to gold, oh, you're a smurf that's starting in platinum. Well, then a lot of the problems of the average community, that are, the average, like, let's say the Reddit posts that are happening, whatever that the average of those players are all, all going to be from iron to gold. Uh, trust me. And then that is suddenly going to go away. The community will no longer, or can no longer complain about Smurfs. So that makes sense. Next matchmaking. Uh, we made a lot of improvements to matchmaking over the first third of the year and the team rolling onto the next goals. We'll be monitoring matchmaking and we'll make tweaks, etc. But investigate topics like autofill, position parity. Both teams... Oh, there we go. That's what I've been talking about. Both teams have the same position autofilled and blue and red side matchmaking calibration. So... That's why I said autofill parity is good, but it's not always balanced because a autofill jungler is worse than an autofill support by far. So that's maybe what they're going to move on to eventually. And that's really cool. And then also, I'm guessing here is when sometimes as a player, you feel like, dude, I'm only getting blue side, but I prefer playing red side. Maybe they're going to try and make it more equal of how often you get both sides. Maybe. But that's good. So overall, this is all the stuff that they've already done. And it seems pretty good. You know, some of them are really big. Like, 54% of games used to be imbalanced when it came to duo queue and pre-made. It's now gone to six. That's insane. Over half of solo queue games used to be imbalanced. Now six. That's huge by itself. And then there, autofill, 11.4% of games used to be imbalanced when it came to autofill. It's now less than five. So, obviously, not as big as a, as a change. But it's because the initial number wasn't as big. So that's overall really promising, really good for ranked players in general. What is coming soon? Here we go. So player feedback. In 10.10, which is the upcoming patch, I believe, uh, or maybe last patch, or maybe current patch, I don't know. Uh, we started lev uh, leveling up our player feedback system notifications. Oh yeah, that was like last patch. And action punishments will be clearer moving forward or going forward. You're now notified when disruptive player gets... Um, you know, punished when you've reported them, even if the player was punished for a different report category in a later game. Uh, let us know and all that. So before the, how the old system worked, you know that little pop-up that says, you know, instant feedback, blah, blah, blah. You only used to get that if your report or your game was the trigger for the person getting reported. So you could have had a crazy toxic person, but they played another game where they were toxic and but they got reported in that game and he got, he got banned or punished from that game, you wouldn't have seen anything because it wasn't your game that triggered it. Now, you will see it. Even if it's a few games later, I think they said around 15 to 20 games later, you'll still see one of these boxes pop up. So that's really good. Um, I think that just gives, even if like technically uh, more reports or more punishments aren't actually happening, just making it more aware that it is happening, you know, in general, I think is a good idea. I don't see a negative, put it that way. So that's good. Um, what's next? All right. So again, you know, some of these are going to go from 2020, some are going to be in 2021 and they'll evolve them and all that stuff and look for success. But here's the first things that are going to be happening. Um, and this one, I believe, is going to be happening late June, early July, is champion select reporting and muting. So this is something that, again, a lot of us in the community have asked for for a long time. Um, so champion select is not the best place to be for a number of reasons. You know, if you're like me, you have chat off in League of Legends in general. Uh, that also means I don't technically want to see champion select, really. Um, 
So having that as an option just to have that muted by default, I think will be lovely. And I will definitely have that on, by the way, because it sounds bad. But maybe with these improved uh, punishments and everything, maybe I'll turn chat back on in three, four months or when I feel the confidence level building. Or maybe I'll have it on on a smurf, see how it goes on one of my smurfs, like, which again is still diamond MMR. And then when I feel, oh, my smurf is not that bad, maybe I'll turn it back on the main account. Um, but anyway... Um, but there will also be champion select reporting. So at first, these reports will establish a data found, um, foundation for champion select behavior. So what that means, by the way, so when they implement this, you will be able to report people in champion select. So if they're trying to roll steal or they're just being generally toxic, you can report them. But they're not going to be using these reports initially for actual punishments. Because in any punishment system, you need to make a foundation of behavior. What's good, what's bad. The system needs to learn that by default. So they'll probably have it on for a good month or two to let it learn what's good or bad. Oh, that's rolls, you know, that person's bad. He should be punished. And then they'll eventually flick the switch to let it actually start giving punishments. So I will say, which means like... If you are somebody that, you know, if there is a toxic individual that is going to be, you know, let's say they're a one trick and they're going to try to hold that the, the, the um, champion slate hostage because they didn't get their role. Technically, they can continue doing that without punishment in champion select when this system comes into place. But because there will be a report function there and it's going to be learning, I reckon it will, even though everybody knows there's no punishments yet, I reckon that that behavior will also go down anyway because there's a report function. Before, obviously, there has been no report function. So these people that do this, they know, oh, if it, you know, if I make someone dodge, I don't get in trouble. Or if I dodge because I don't, you know, no one else dodges, I'm not going to get in trouble 99% of the time. Well, now there will officially be a report function. So I think a lot of these people will feel a little bit less inclined to do it. And they'll just dodge instantly in Champion Select if they don't get what they want. Um, which is good. Um, so that's good. All right. So next up. And by the way, there's, there's still more stuff to go. And by the way, there's a couple of big things too. Um, so stick around. Uh, and by the way, I want to hear what all your feedback is in the comments in this video. And as a, an incentive, why not? I'm in a giving mood. Uh, we'll give away, uh, what should we do? Uh, $10 of riot points to one individual. All you're going to do is maybe a subscriber, like the video and just leave your feedback, but make sure you include your summoner name and your region if you do want to enter. But again, I'm looking for comments that actually are giving your opinions on these topics. And by the way, don't comment yet. Uh, or if you have commented, feel free to edit your comment later because there are a couple big things more in this announcement. But anyway, the first thing that they are doing is again, something that I have wanted for a while is opening flex restrictions. So if you're like me, I am not a big fan of flex queue. It always feels a bit of a joke. I miss ranked fives. A big reason why I miss ranked fives is because it wasn't a hassle to actually get in game. Just to explain, People may be aware I occasionally do a series called Flex with Friends. If you watch that series, I cannot play on my main account in that series. The reason why is because our rankings are too different. But they're my friends that I want to play Flex with. We're never taking it seriously. We're just having fun, but we want to play ranked. And it's like, well, I can't get in game with some of them because my Flex rating is what platinum or something and theirs is gold or silver. I don't know. So this is good. So... Over the past few months, we've seen five stack pre-mades in flex go from less than 20% to greater than 35. Obviously, that might be because of the recent conditions in the world. Uh, likely due to the launch of Clash and more time at home. So yeah, with Clash coming, guys, we need to practice. Where are you going to practice? Well, flex queue, obviously. Um, this makes full pre-mades the most popular party size in all of flex queue. There's no better time for us to loosen up the gates and allow players to play uh, with just now, which is awesome. To maintain match fairness, we're switching Flex's matchmaking to more similar to Clashes, which prioritize balance across a broader range of MMR. We're currently locking down, uh, which are coming. Okay, so they're saying this is happening, but how they're doing it, it doesn't seem that they're actually saying. Um, but what is likely to happen is there'll probably be, if I had to guess, no actual restriction on who can play together, but it will most likely balance the games to maybe your more higher rated player. I think that's what Clash does. And it's not perfect. Let's say you play Clash and you've got one diamond guy, four gold players. It'll probably be a mid to high platinum level Clash. So still not diamond, but much higher than the average gold player in the team. They'll probably do this for flex queue. So obviously, you know, if you're playing flex and you've got that one diamond player and you've got four golds, 
and you're against Platinums, well, the gold players might struggle a bit, but in theory, the diamond player should do really well. Like, that's... I, I'm fine with that. That is good. Because at least it allows me and a lot of people to play on whatever account you want, because it does really feel annoying having to swap account just to play with friends. But that's good. Um, Preseason ideas and exploration. Okay, so here are some big, big, big announcements. Promo series. So this is one that I've toyed with the idea of potentially going away. Um, toward the goal of improving progression, satisfaction, and skill expression in our current systems, it's looking likely that we'll be removing inter-division promotions to reduce frustration of seamlessly hitting a wall when you know you've been playing well. Hallelujah, dude! Like, this is great. This is, honestly, I was waiting for this to come up because this is my biggest joyous thing. They suck. Promo series suck. Like, you legit could be on a massive win streak feeling great, and then you just get, you're in promo, and you just get two dodgy games in a row. I lost my promo. And then you can go on another win streak, I'm back in promo, and then you lose two again. It's like, but I should, what? Like, ah! Um, but if there was no promo, you would have been promoted, right? I, I, I like this a lot. Um, it, it's better for ranked as a whole in terms of a video game and, and satisfaction and having fun. Um, you know, recently, if you watch the Smurf series, I think both times it happened in the Duo series, I hit 99 LP in two games. Um, two separate occasions hit 99 LP, which meant my next win was for technically, and I, again, Riot will always say, oh, but in the background, it's helping your MMR. Again, when you don't show us the MMR, that doesn't matter. You're, when it comes to satisfaction, it's about your LP and getting promoted. So being on 99 LP and your next game is for 1 LP is the most tilting thing in the world because you're like, well, this sucks. Where in this system, oh, I'm on 99 LP. Well, it doesn't matter. If I win the next one, I'll be promoted instantly and I'll probably be on 17 LP in the next division so much healthier for the average player. And what I like is they are apparently, and what looks to be here, it's inter interdivisional. So what that means is if you're gold, if you are gold four, to go to gold three, there'll be no promotion series. Gold two to gold one, no promotion series. Gold one to platinum four, there will be a promotion series. And by the way, I am fine with that because obviously they are much less common and they are a bit more, there's a bit more gravity to that, isn't there? Like, oh, a, a brand new rank name, not gold. Like, I'm not gold three to gold two. No, I'm going to platinum or I'm a diamond player and I'm getting master. It's a different name for a rank. I'm fine with that. Like, genuinely, that is a-okay with me. But honestly, that is huge. Like, the, the title of this video is most likely going to be like Riot doing rank changes plus no more promo series question mark because that is big and i think a lot of people may not realize how much it is going to make that you know ranked as a whole feel so much healthier again we'll say is that going to help when it comes to like ranked quality probably not but it will just help towards everybody's mindset it'll make everybody happier i think for rank that's good oh by the way that's a tft thing by the way they did that in tft and it felt good in tft um ranked if so again these are all things that they're doing so this won't happen until ranked 2021 pre-season 2021 but i'm gonna be honest it's already june the year's going quite fast i don't know if it's just for me it will not be long until this this season's over I, as crazy as that sounds Ranked information, matchmaking, and transparency. Players' matches were display with where displayed ranks are very uh, far apart is frustrating, regardless of how close is everyone's MMR is. So again, you see this especially, uh, especially come up on Reddit. Dude, why I'm silver? Why uh, why am I in platinum games? Or I'm in diamond one. Why is this gold player in my game? The reason why is the background MMR, the matchmaking rating. You have the same MMR. The, being gold diamond what it doesn't matter like that is literally what we as players just see that is the shiny badge on the outside your actual rating that riot sees is the mmr that they have hidden that's why um but anyway we're looking to modify matchmaking to include rank spread limits and skill level transparency updates the goal here is to give you confidence that you're playing with other players who are in the same stage of their climb as you Overall, we'd like to avoid uh, the, those occasions where you see large gaps. So they're in essence trying to be like, even though these MMRs are different, we might put a cap on actual rating differences, which that eh, you could get a little bit of unbalanced skill then when it comes to climbs, because if MMR is what Riot judge off 
how good someone is technically in the background, but they're going to put a cap to like, oh, if you're in platinum, you cannot have a silver player in your game. Even though if their MMR is the same, you cannot have a silver player in your game. Well, then that silver player will be playing in much easier games, right? Like maybe it's a smurf, but still like, I, I think they'd have to be careful with that because if you truly understand the MMR system, this stuff doesn't actually matter. But to the average player, I guess it does. Rewards and legacy rec re uh, recognition. We'll be making thematic changes to the victorious line and highlighting uh, your current and past rank accomplishments so that, you know, it basically... It's to show off a bit more, which is fine. You know, with the recent changes, I remember having a meeting with right, Satmagic Ed, who at the time was the head of Ranked, and he was talking about, like, oh, we want to try and give recognition. I don't think enough was given. Like, all there is nowadays is the banner. So the banner, obviously, used to be this really big thing in Champion Select... Sorry, in the loading screen, your banner used to show what your previous season's rank was. Obviously, nowadays, it's your current rank. But then at the bottom of your profile, if you go on your profile on the client, and I think in maybe the loading screen, the bottom part of it is your past season rank. But I think a lot of people don't even know that. Uh, and obviously a lot of people are the same rank as they what they were last season. For example, my account has the diamond top bit and the diamond bot bit. So it just looks diamond. Um, I think maybe they could like do something. Like I, I don't know, maybe agree, disagree, let me know in the comments. It'd be kind of cool that you could show not just your past finishing rank in a season like obviously it's important to see where you finish like for example last season i finished season nine in diamond two but i think it'll be also cool because again if you're just like if you want to just give recognition to a climb for the previous seasons why don't you show or allow players to be like hey dude like oh he peaked master last season or he peaked diamond one or he peaked challenger last season just getting to that rank once is a cool achievement and maybe having something on your profile or something just to show hey i've been master once or like i've i've peaked at that rating i think that would be cool that that would add you know literally what they're saying here is rewards and legacy recognition that would help i, I, I like a lot of us have probably peaked at ratings that we haven't just quite achieved again but we did it you know we got there so maybe give recognition to that. I think that would be pretty cool. Um, so we've already spoken about this. So organized group play. So they're going to be doing more with Clash. They'll be doing more with Flex and all that. That's fine. And that is it. So overall, a really big ranked update. It's nice to have this because I don't know if I'm the only one. It, it really felt for a couple years there that, you know, it kind of got a bit quiet. You know, season at the beginning of season nine, they were quite vocal, especially in preseason. And then they kind of got pretty quiet for the rest of season nine when it didn't go very well. And then basically nothing happened in season 10 either. Like nothing much was addressed. But finally, they are seeming to address all of this stuff. And it does seem to be um, unanimously positive in my book. Um, promos in, in, you know, between divisions, I think that is good to go away. That will increase healthy attitudes, um, champion set reporting and stuff, behavior stuff, uh, the duo queue parity, autofill parity, all of this stuff is going to help ranked a lot in the long run. And I will say season 10 has still been a pretty bad season, uh, I think for a lot of ranked players, but this does, and I will say, and maybe this will give some people like, oh, okay, that's good. This makes me excited for season 11. It, it truly does. If they're going to be implementing these actual changes that we've needed for years, if it, that is coming in season 11, I, again, I don't know if they're going to be calling it season 11 because they're, they're not calling this season season 10, by the way, by the looks of it. They're calling it season 2020. So maybe season 2021, uh, when these changes come in, I think it's going to be good. So finally, uh, Ranked is being worked on in, in what I felt like it's needed for a while. Let me know, though, what you guys think down below. Go crazy. Again, we're doing the right point giveaway. Be a subscriber, like the video, and give your comments about all this stuff. Um, feel free to talk about all of it. Feel free to just talk about one thing. Give your opinion on it. I'd be love, you know, love to. If you're not a ranked player, by the way, does this give you the confidence to enter ranked? You know, because you, I, I, I know I've had people on stream say, oh, I don't play ranked and I don't think I want to because all the content creators I watch, all they do is complain about ranked. Does this give you that confidence maybe next season to, to get involved? Let me know. But everybody, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this update. Uh, again, I like doing them because they're an interesting topic. But I'll see you guys next time. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Uh, adios, amigos.